Hello and welcome to our second lecture on the Falling Water House by Frank Lloyd Wright. In the earlier lecture we saw the actual design, the space inside, and, and the major architectural characteristics of the project. In the second lecture we can discuss the origin of the project, where does it come from, how it was designed, the actual process, the inspiration for it, and the influences in this project. Okay, well, let's begin with, uh, again, we're talking about falling water. It's in Bear Run, Pennsylvania, 1935-36. And in any Frank Lloyd Wright course, we're supposed to get anecdotes. So Frank Lloyd Wright is just, you know. Full of them. Full of them, <laughs> right. And there are less and less of them, but there were a lot of people who had worked with Wright, and they would tell these stories. And they all referred to him as Mr. Wright. He was Mr. Wright to the people working with him and this uh, apprenticeship. And there'd be stories like um, uh, when our client was freaking out because the roof was leaking, he had a flood, Wright came over and folded up a little paper boat and put it, in the, <laughs> put it into the flood. So uh, when Wright got this commission, he only visited the site once. And he, there are no design development drawings. He didn't, he didn't, you know, he designed the whole thing in his head. So the story goes that uh, Kaufman uh, was, had some work uh, in Wright's part of the world in Wisconsin and contacted Wright and said, I'm coming to, uh, I'm coming to Wisconsin. Can we, can, you know, Taliesin is there. Can I come by and we'll see how the project's doing? And Wright says, terrific. And he calls and says, I'm in Chicago. Uh, I'll be there in a couple of days. Wright says, we're waiting. Uh, he calls again, he says, I'm in Racine, I have some meetings, and uh, Wright says, we're waiting. He calls in the morning, says, I'm leaving Racine, I'll be there in a few hours, and at this point, Wright lays out the paper. And the students are all standing around with razor blades, sharpening the pencils and feeding mm -hmm. them to him, and he just grinds out the structural grid, the first floor, the second floor. Here's his drawing of laying out the uh, beams for the cantilevers, and uh, just as he's finishing the perspective rendering, Kaufman comes to the door and Wright says, where have you been? We've been waiting for you. <laughs> so that's, that's a Frank Lloyd Wright story, and um, there, there are many more, but I, we'll, make, we'll make do with that one. Now the other issue here that becomes interesting is the influences, where this thing came from. How did Wright happen to do this? Well, there's uh, Japan, <coughs> and Wright actually owned some uh, Japanese prints that had waterfalls. Remember, Jap Excuse me. <coughs> Remember that Wright collected uh, Japanese prints. <coughs> also, we see in Japanese aesthetic a foreground and then kind of a layered space with a clear foreground. We see that very much in uh, in falling water. And then we recall that uh, coming from the Wasmuth folio and particularly the back of the Ward Willett House leads us to De Steel, things like Rittfeld's Schroeder House. And we can find, fo follow through a whole thread of this. But then 1927-29, Richard Neutra builds the uh, Lovell House in uh, Pasadena, uh, California with these cantilevering out over the cliffs. And historians like to say, aha, first Wright influenced the Europeans, and then they influenced him. And Wright's response to that was, uh, here we see these cantilevers. Wright's response to that was, oh yeah? Well, how come I had already done it in 1909? Hmm. And this is the Thomas Gale House, which if you go element by element, the lower deck, the lower deck, the upper deck, the upper deck, the roof, the anchoring feature, the cantilevering to the left. It's exactly the same as falling water. It's on a flat piece of ground, but it's exactly the same. And the suspicion is that Wright did that deliberately so that no one could say that there was any European influence on him. Now, of course there was, but hmm. Wright, you know, the architects like to think that they create the whole thing themselves. Hmm. Uh, there are no influences, and Wright certainly does have a case. All he did was eliminate the dark trim, and he had already done it in 1909. Hmm. So that's Wright's response Amazing. to the, the uh, suggestion that he was influenced 
by the Lovell House or any other uh, Europeans. Oh, there's also an interesting story at the Momo when he, he didn't want to participate in the exhibit because he told that he wasn't reflected prominently enough in 1932. Right, right. Oh, yeah, big egos. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, leave a question for our students. What is the role of influence in an architect's development? Famously, um, uh, Harold Bloom says, he to, he was talking about poetry, but the anxiety of influence is the name of the book, where he says, there aren't any works of art, only responses to works of art. You know, it, every work is a dialogue with a response to an engagement with other works. So we'll, um, you know, next we'll talk about the structure at uh, Falling Water. Hmm. Speaking about the anecdotes, there are quite a number of stories of how he got the commission because the student, one of the students from the fellowship was, uh, an apprentice from the fellowship was the son of the Kaufman family. Correct. So what was the relationship between Wright and the family? W were there any other interactions or they, projects? Uh, yes, it was, uh, it was tumultuous and stressful. You know, it was a wonderful experience for them. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, rich people collect art is, you know, of course, they want to support the arts, but it also positions them socially and culturally. And being on the cover of Time magazine didn't hurt Kaufman's stature. <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, so, but then there were other projects that Wright thought they should give to him, and they figured they had enough headaches with this one. Maybe they get someone a little bit less, uh, a little bit less out there as an architect for some other projects. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you, John.